mistakes were made. So first of all, if you are new here, I definitely recommend clicking the link at the top of the screen. That's gonna take you to my last video in this series. You can get all caught up and everything I'm about to do and say is going to make a lot more sense. So last video, we got our uh, turbo cam installed in the L83 here, and I started measuring uh, the piston to valve clearance when I came to the conclusion that there really wasn't any. So I measured only 16 thou of PTV, where ideally with this setup, you'd want between 60 to 70 thou. Now, after speaking to the tech at Comp Cams, because this does have a Comp Cam in it, with a custom tune time performance profile. So it's tune times grind, Comp Cams just cut the cam for them. But after uh, speaking to Comp Cams, the tech recommended 60 thou of PTV. And after speaking with tune time, whose grind this is, uh, their engine builder recommended at least 70 thou. So in the last video, I measured a whopping 16 thou. And after degreeing the camshaft and uh, finding out that the intake center line was off, I thought that that was just the end all, 100% the issue. But what it turned out being was just, um, I don't know how to measure piston to valve clearance. And what I mean by that is when I was actually measuring this and I, I looked back at my uh, kind of cutting room floor footage when I put this video together, to see when I did measure this. When I was putting the caliper on here to measure the indent in the clay, I was going a little too far down with it. So when I would actually pull the caliper off, I'd have an indent um, in the side of the clay. So uh, since that last video, I did put some new clay in this. I did put the head back on. I rechecked the PTV. I made sure to get dead on, just touching the clay, not to leave an indent. And uh, I came up with 55 thou for piston to valve clearance. Now, as I just mentioned, uh, comp cams recommend 60, tune time recommends 70. So we're still not on our mark where we need to be. And yeah, after degreeing the cam in last video, we came up with 109 degrees at intake center line instead of the 112 that the cam card um, called for. So basically what that means is that the intake valve is opening sooner, uh, is more advanced, opening sooner than it was supposed to for the grind that you know the cam was actually spec to. However, regardless of all that, um, we're still probably gonna be cutting it close. I don't exactly know how much that intake center line being dead on is actually going to give us PTV wise. I mean, it could give us the 15th hour missing and bring us up to 70 um, or it could be less. I really don't know. However, what I do know is I'm going to keep this camp because at the end of the day, I don't think three degrees of intake center line, like more advanced is really gonna hurt anything. It's probably gonna help anything more than anything. Um, I would think it would probably shift the power, power band down and maybe let the turbo spool a little bit better. I don't know, definitely leave your thoughts down in the comments. But yeah, what we're basically gonna end up doing is just notching the pistons to give us the extra 15, 20 valve clearance that I'm looking for. All right, so this is what I'm gonna be using to cut my valve reliefs. Now I showed you guys a little glimpse of this in the last video. And once again, I got this from Lindy Tool. Uh, the gentleman that I spoke to over there, extremely helpful. He's the owner of the company, the um, creator of this tool. Definitely recommend uh, checking them out. I'm gonna put a link down in the description. He was very helpful, knew exactly what he was talking about. And uh, they do actually make custom tools over there. So if you need something special built, um, I'm sure they're gonna be able to help you out. But essentially all we're gonna do with this is pull an intake valve out, pop this in the head, and then we're gonna just spin this on a drill, reinstall the head, and we're just gonna feed this into the engine and it's gonna cut a valve relief the exact shape and in the exact spot uh, where it needs to be.
Okay, I ended up taking off a lot more material than I was planning on. So what ended up happening was, um, starting with cylinder one, I didn't have a hex key to tighten the little collar set screw the correct way. So what I ended up doing was using probably what a lot of you guys have also done in the past. I know I'm guilty of it. Um, using a Torx bit because it fit pretty good and you know, it's not like we're putting a huge amount of torque on the thing. But yeah, I tightened it with the Torx bit, just snugged it down, didn't want to strip it out. And what ended up happening was when I was making the cut that I set to 35 thou, uh, the collar, because it wasn't tight enough, it kind of slipped down. So I ended up taking off probably about a hundred thou. This isn't really like a huge issue. The pistons have plenty of material there. So it's not like I was actually gonna go through the piston or anything. After the first cut on this piston, I didn't want that to happen on the second one and slip. So I ended up over tightening the collar and then I stripped the, uh, the head out because I was using Torx bit. So um, yeah, kind of screwed myself right from the get go with that one. And then because the collar didn't work, I then just went around with um, the caliper and some painter's tape and I just bottomed the tool out on the piston and then I'd mark 75 thou on the caliper and then put a piece of tape between the valve seal and that point on the tool. And then I'd use the caliper to kind of make sure that number was correct. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have used a feeler gauge. That would have made a lot more sense just to set a feeler gauge on there and then uh, Put the tape again, yeah. Oh, it's too late now. So before we dive into the final assembly on this thing, I do want to point out that off camera, I went ahead and upgraded all of the factory trunnion bearings with a kit from CHE Precision Inc. Um, this is something that I've done in every motor that I've cammed. My Camaro, the 5.3 got it, the 6.0 has it. My Tahoe's engine, I just put a cam in, has it and I'm putting it in this thing. Essentially what can happen with the factory rocker arms, uh, the factory trunnion bearings, they use needle bearings in here. So when you upgrade the cam, you run a lot more lift, you run a lot more RPM, it's a lot more abuse. Those needles can essentially, and it has happened before, that's why they make this kit. Not to me, but it is an issue that can occur. Uh, those needles will just kind of fall apart, the bearings will fall apart and you'll lose your rocker and uh, you'll just get little needle bearings scattered throughout your motor. It's a very simple upgrade to do. You just pop the old bearing out and then the new one just floats in there with a couple of snap rings. The bushings just pop in by hand and uh, yeah, you have upgraded rockers and you have no bearings that are essentially gonna fall out and ruin your day.
All right, so our LED3 is finally headed, cammed, sealed up, and by next video, this thing should be back in the car for good, at least until we start it up and notice a million problems. Nope, I'm joking, we're not gonna have any issues. We're not gonna have any issues. But for now, that's gonna do it for this Trans Am episode. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, link down in the description. I haven't been posting on there often, but if you do wanna see updates in between videos, I am gonna try to post more on there, more progress photos as I am working on the next video that's gonna go up.